I will pay $10,000 to anyone who can prove the Supreme Court justices are not criminals. I will also shut down my video channel. My lack of followers and subscribers indicates that most people prefer slavery over freedom. They choose to listen to useless BS from Hannity and send $7 a month to Matt Taibbi for inconsequential posts on Substack. Yes, he and Musk exposed the Twitter censorship scam. So what? The Supreme Court just voted against free speech, saying censorship can continue. In Murthy v. Missouri, a lawsuit was filed to limit the government's ability to pressure social media companies into restricting free speech. By a vote of 6-3, the Supreme Court ruled that the plaintiffs did not have, quote, legal standing, close quote, to bring their lawsuit. Writing for the majority, turncoat Amy Cornhole Barrett concluded that social media companies can continue censoring content even when pressured by the government to do so. We are slaves, folks, and all the ramblings from most political pundits are nothing more than entertainment. They don't care about you. All they want is a paycheck, an ego boost, and clickbait views on YouTube. Another point. It's almost laughable that people are protesting the Supreme Court's rulings on abortion and immunity for the president. They only protest the rulings they don't agree with. They don't focus on the major issue facing us, or they don't care. The major issue is that every member of the Supreme Court, with the possible exception of Justice Clarence Thomas, are criminals. Their rulings over the years have pissed on our rights. Recently, the Supreme Court struck down a few regulations, but those were on procedural grounds. They have also clawed back the unconstitutional practice of federal agencies who write their own laws. But the unconstitutional laws themselves have been upheld by the Supreme Court. Nowhere is this more blatant than upholding federal firearm possession laws that are specifically prohibited under the Second Amendment. See United States v. Rahimi, June 21, 2024. Of course, the justices of the Supreme Court are not the only criminals. The district and appellate judges, federal prosecutors, federal agents, and all members of Congress are also criminals under the conspiracy and RICO statutes. I base this on one indisputable fact. Anyone who violates your rights is a criminal under Title 18 U.S.C. Section 241, Conspiracy Against Rights, and under Section 242, Deprivation of Rights Under Color of Law. Section 241 says, If two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege, secured to him by the Constitution or laws of the United States or because of his having so exercised the same, or if two or more persons go in disguise on the highway or on the premises of another with intent to prevent or hinder his free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege so secured. They shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than ten years or both, and if death results from the acts committed in violation of this section, they shall be fined or imprisoned for any term of years, or for life, or both, or may be sentenced to death. Remember the Waco and Ruby Ridge murders? I thought no one was above the law. Section 242 says, Whoever, under color of any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom, willfully subjects any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured or protected by the Constitution or laws of the United States, or to different punishments, pains, or penalties on account of such person being an alien, or by reason of his color or race, then are prescribed for the punishment of citizens, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than one year, or both, or up to a life term, or the death penalty, depending upon the circumstances of the crime and the resulting injury. Color of law violations are unlawful actions by law enforcement or other government officials in the process of carrying out the law. This can include unlawful actions such as deprivation of medical care, deprivation of the right to vote, 
and discrimination. What are our rights? They are numerous, but our fundamental rights are expressed in the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles, and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. It's important to remember that the Bill of Rights, or more properly, the Bill of Wrongs, is not an exhaustive listing of our rights. Our rights are virtually unlimited, and this is reinforced by Amendment 9. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. We must also keep in mind that the power of the federal government is not unlimited. The overlooked Tenth Amendment makes this clear. It says, The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively, or to the people. Despite this limitation, 80% of what the federal government does is not delegated or enumerated in the Constitution. It took a constitutional amendment to ban alcohol. So where is the delegated and enumerated power to criminalize drugs and other items? Where is the delegated and enumerated power to ban certain firearms? The justices uphold these violations by a bastardized interpretation of the Interstate Commerce Clause. Under their interpretation, they can ban or regulate anything at all, including personal behavior, even when it is not interstate or commercial. And by the way, where is the delegated and enumerated power to send our tax money to Israel or Ukraine? Giving money to foreign countries, or should I say sponsoring foreign wars with our taxes, is not a delegated or enumerated power. The taxing power is, unfortunately, enumerated. But the misuse of taxes for purposes not authorized by the Constitution is not. Moreover, the federal income tax is unconstitutional, as applied, because the 1040 form and others violate the First and Fifth Amendment. You are forced to swear under oath to the veracity of your income statements. Though the Supreme Court says this compelled testimony doesn't violate your Fifth Amendment rights, common sense says otherwise. It also violates your right to free speech by forcing you to speak on the 1040 under threat of imprisonment. That is not free speech. All federal firearm possession laws violate the Second Amendment, even though such laws are expressly prohibited from any infringement. The Second Amendment does not say you have the right to keep and bear only those firearms the government approves of, and it doesn't say you must first get permission from the government to buy one. The Fourth Amendment prohibition against unreasonable searches and seizures and without probable cause has been watered down by so many rulings that it is meaningless. Now we have the NSA's unlawful collection of everyone's phone calls, texts, and emails. The Sixth Amendment right to counsel is a joke. Lawyers are officers of the court and beholden to court rules, not your defense. I know this from personal experience. Furthermore, we don't have a jury of our peers. Grand juries can indict a ham sandwich. Your property can be seized indefinitely on suspicion, and restrictions based solely on what you might do rather than what you have done violate due process, and on and on. These are not violations in the abstract. They have real-world consequences that cause suffering and death to many people. Check the link in the description below for an extremely thorough article exposing our many rights that government criminals routinely violate. It is too lengthy to explain in this video. Also check out three books which definitively prove that federal criminals at all levels have hijacked lawful government. The first book is The Star-Spangled Deception, The True History of the United States Constitution. It explains in detail how the Supreme Court has authorized the violation of the Bill of Rights. All prosecutors, federal agents, 
and the entire cabal of Congress who enforce and enact laws that violate our rights are also criminals. Title 18 U.S.C. Sections 241 and 242 apply equally to them. The second book is They Left No Crime Uncommitted. You will see exactly how federal judges, prosecutors, and federal agents conspire to prosecute you for exercising your rights. The third book is titled Dirty Laundry, How I Stole Billions in CIA Drug Money, Almost. Many classified documents prove that high-level government officials have participated in the smuggling and laundering of proceeds from drug trafficking. Names included. You don't have to read these books to qualify for the $10,000 cash offer, but you will know more than 99% of the public if you do, and you will be able to speak with authority wherever you go. I believe that many people already realize the federal government is hopelessly corrupt and rotten to the core. Others consider it a criminal organization and no longer cooperate in any shape, form, or fashion. They refuse to convict anyone in federal courts. If, like me, you are tired of being duped, suckered, swindled, snookered, hoodwinked, gaslighted, robbed, and lied to, join the club. Otherwise, Check the link in the description below for the contact address to submit your proof that the Supreme Court justices and their cohorts are not criminals. $10,000 cash is waiting for you. All I ask is that you read my proof before wasting my time.